Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and it's time for more Scuttlebutt on this glorious Monday, first mo true Monday of fall here on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Welcome in, I'm glad you are here. Um, this week's game in the background brought to you by brand new tier 8 premium German battleship. This is Brandenburg. I was not overly kind to Brandenburg in my first look video uh, for this ship, which is elsewhere on the channel. But um, she's come through testing with some changes to her uh, main battery dispersion, a couple other, other other tweaks along the way. And I think in the end where they landed this ship is not in a terrible spot. She's kind of... If I'm honest, she's kind of Odin for people who couldn't get Odin, right? Like, she she lacks the hydro, she brings an extra turret, she still has the torpedoes, it's the same guns as Odin, it's a slightly different dispersion pattern, but the hull is pretty comparable, she has more hit points, like, so, in my mind, she's, she's kind of a... She's she's a, a side grade to Odin, like I said, she's an Odin for, for people who didn't get Odin. Um... I, this is my very first game in the ship here. I, I kitted this thing out for basically a full secondary build with IFHE, and I was pleasantly surprised at how good she was down-tiered in this tier 10 battle. I don't, I don't absolutely smash things, but I have a pretty solid little game here for a bottom-tier battleship. I get a ton of work out of my secondaries. We'll talk about that later. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy the game, and I hope you are uh, entertained while I gab into the microphone here for a little while. What's been going on in shooty boats? Well, guys, we are four days into King of the Sea 13 here on North America. There's been a lot of action. Of course, I missed day three to, to, for a family event, but I was here for days one, two, and four. Zath had you covered. Uh, Zath and Escons had you covered for day three. Hope you uh, were able to tune in and hang out with them. But there's been a ton of action. And of course, as normal with King of the Sea, guys, there's been no shortage of drama. If you watched Mingles with Jingles earlier today, you know that Jingles talked about this. And yes, there was definitely some drama here on the NA bracket. The drama in the EU bracket was honestly pretty tame by comparison. You basically had a team dumb enough to say in open chat in the middle of a match, oh yeah, by the way, we're busy throwing this game. <sighs> Give me a break, guys. Like, that is just, no. That's just dumb. Like, just, no. No. Like, if you're going to do it, I mean, no one can stop you, let's be honest. No one can stop you from doing it, but you but we, but we, you should be smart enough to not advertise it. Like, come on, okay? Um, so that was a thing. And then over in the NA bracket, we had something a little more convoluted. And I'm going to talk about this for a little bit more at length because I am, a, I was, I'm still a member of the NA Wiki team. I was the lead of the Wiki team for a couple of years here. And so I feel like I have a little bit of insight into this. So let me let me let me back up and lay some lay background. What happened was uh, a member of one of the teams played with his press account um, in King of the Sea in order to have access to a ship that he did not have access to on his main account, his personal account. This is a no-no. All right. Now it seems as if somewhere along the way. This, the, the fact that this is a no-no has been lost in translation. Back when I was running the program, or when I went back, that wasn't running the program. I was, you know, I was in charge of managing the program, let's say. This would have been 2017 to 2019, about mid-2017 to mid-2019. When um, Wargaming created press accounts for us as editors so that we would have access to every ship in the game, regardless of how it was obtained, in order to uh, in order for us to have like no excuses to be able to write wiki articles, to work on the wiki, to get screenshots, play games, whatever we needed, you had this account. It basically had unlimited doubloons, unlimited cash, free ships, and it was like, look, you need to do work on the wiki. Here's every tool you need. No excuses. Awesome. That's a great. That's a great resource to have. But when we were issued these accounts from Wargaming, it was with the caveat, look, this account is for randoms and training rooms. You are not to take it into clan battles. You are not to take it into ranked battles. And though it was never explicitly stated, it was pretty bloody obvious that it was not meant for anything competitive modes, it, you know, king of the sea, third party tournaments, whatever. Now, I handed off the reins of the program in 2019 to somebody else. The program has gone on without me in the meantime. I mean, I'm still, I'm still there. I still sit in the channel. I don't participate nearly as much as I used to. The wiki program was kind of eating my life at one stage. And, and so I don't really, I'm not really up to, up to snuff and privy to what all goes on anymore. But like when we're given press accounts for 
community contributors. We're given the exact same spiel, right? This account is not for competitive modes. It's not for ranked. It's not for clan battles. That is forbidden. And so somewhere along the way, presumably that message has kind of gotten lost in translation with relation to the press accounts handed out to the wiki program people because the, apparently they're not, that wasn't communicated to this particular individual and the specific like wording that would bar them from using it in King of the Sea didn't exist in the rule set at the time. So there's there's a little bit of leeway here and a little bit of a little bit of head scratching like okay but like why did you think this was okay to take a, an account that had literally free ships of every nation on it you didn't have to earn including ships that you don't already own and you thought it was okay to play it in a tournament like oh come on this is it one of those come on man moments right like anyway um, long story short, the, the particular players involved in this, of course, one of them was an adjudicator, of course. One of them was a, the, the team uh, that he was on was being uh, run, managed, whatever. The team lead was a King of the Sea admin because, of course. And so in the end, Wargaming was basically kind of asked to come in and help clear up the mess. The, the various NA admins were like, look, we're going to get slapped with bias accusations no matter what we do. And so that's what happened. In the end, the player was basically kind of told, look, you're not going to get any rewards. And the team was kind of thrown out. The latter part is the part that I kind of disagree with. I've, I, I, and Zath and I had this conversation in King, on, um, on stream on Sunday while we were streaming day four, which is, you know, punish the player. I got no problem with that. Uh, but I feel like because I, I, as, as uh, ganky as it is, for lack of a better word, right? Like, it does feel like punishing the team is a little heavy-handed um, to some extent, but that is what it is. So there was definitely some drama there and the tournament has gone and we got our, our, our brackets now, of course, our top four on the NA server that is going to be 07 KSC, um, BN's second team, Zath and I were able to play kind of BN fielded two teams in the event. They fought each other, um, in the first round of the winner's bracket on Sunday and BN's second team that had to play through the qualification stages was the only team non-seeded team to win their game in that bracket, which was a lot of fun to watch. They have moved all the way up to the semifinals along with Bonks. Bonks was, of course, in the North American finals last time. We had a, we had a rematch of the North American finals, SCCC and Bonks down in the quarterfinals. Bonks coming out on top this time. They have moved back to the semifinals. We have our top four there. And then, of course, there are still eight teams progressing through the loser's bracket. There are only 12 teams surviving in the entire event, right? But there are still eight teams that only have kind of one loss or one non-group win in the event up to this point. There's some really good teams down there. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Of course, SCCC is still in the event. Um, Main Buenos Noches still in the event. QQ7 is still around. Um, a team, uh, Nam, which is a newcomer to the event, they've been a ton of fun to watch. I had a blast being able to see them on Sunday. Um, and then uh, Amanda del Sur is still alive in that bracket. So lots of good teams, lots of good action. All that will be coming your way this coming Saturday and Sunday over on the main World of Warships channel. And of course, my channel and Zaz's channel. We're going to be doing the game calls, um, sitting in the, the booth, the studio, in between games, doing analysis, Bogsy and Esconce, and uh, it's going to be a good cast, guys. Hope you'll come check it out. Hope you'll come tune in. We love putting on a good show, and uh, Wargaming's taking this kind of back over. You might know for the last three King of the Seas, I have basically managed the NA Finals cast from my computer here in Houston. I'm finally, thank the Lord, divesting myself of that, turning that back over to Wargaming. They're going to be in charge of that going forward. And I'm very glad to turn that duty back over to them. Um, now, I mentioned Mingles with Jingles here a little earlier. I got to make a couple of corrections, right? Um, Jingles is incredibly knowledgeable, but he had a couple of, of minor errors in this morning's video that I want to point out. He was talking about King of the Sea being kind of the oldest competitive event in World of Warships. It's not entirely accurate. The, the NA server and, and the Supremacy League were the first people to get competitive warships going. And in fact, King of the Sea as we know it today would not exist without the Supremacy League um, having having come into being because when the orga original organizers of King of the Sea on EU were trying to get King of the Sea going, they were unable to do so. They weren't able to get any traction with the EU community team. And so they reached out to the Supremacy League guys here across the Atlantic who put them in contact with their contact. And at the time, it would have been San Francisco, which is where the, the Wargaming NA offices were at the moment. Um, that, I believe that was Como Pueblos at the time. And Q helped kind of get them going, get them in touch with the right people, get them surprise support.
support going, and so on and so forth. So, so the the tournament has a lot owes a lot to NA in the sense of they were kind of inspired by what we were doing on NA, and then of course the NA contacts allowed them to really kind of get going with their early prize support. He also talks about carriers not being allowed in King of the Sea. Um, that's actually uh, you know we uh, not entirely accurate. Carriers were always in King of the Sea up until. King of the Sea 9. King of the Sea 8 was the very first King of the Sea after the carrier rework. It was a disaster. He's correct about that. But then once King of the Sea 9 rolled around, the admins made the decision, look, we're pulling carriers out. They're not ready. They're not fit for competitive play in their current form. And ever since then, carriers have been excluded from King of the Sea. But up to that point, they were in every single King of the Sea. Now, here's the other thing to remember, guys, and that is that carriers were seen as a barrier to entry in the event, especially under the old RTS system. You had to have a, a very specific player with a very specific kill set, skill set to run a, run a carrier in the old RTS system. And so once carriers were removed from the event, rightly or wrongly, we saw a huge uptick in interest, a huge top tick in signups. And since their removal and since they continue to be excluded, the tournament has just exploded in terms of size and participation. And so honestly, that's why I'm I honestly believe you continue to see carriers left out of the event. Rightly or wrongly, that's where we are. So a couple of a couple of small corrections there to an otherwise fabulous mingles with jingles this morning. Um What's going on elsewhere? Well, super ships are coming. They're on PTS. I'm trying to get some first look videos organized for the week here, looking at the four new. Now, if you remember, there was a big super ship special battle mode not long ago that introduced us to tier 10 Japanese battleship Satsuma and tier 10 German battleship Hanover. So you should probably be at least passingly familiar with those ships. But there are four new ships in that they're calling super ships. Really, these are like tier 11 ships, if we're honest. Um, that is tier 10 French cruiser Conde, tier 10 American cruiser Annapolis. Basically, that's a super Henri and a super Des Moines. Um, tier 10 Russian destroyer Zorki looks to be like a super Kaba. And tier 10 Japanese destroyer Yamagiri, which is kind of like a super Shimakaze. I'm, I'm going to try and get over to PTS and do some first look videos at all these ships this week so we can talk about what they're up to over there. Um, and then it's going to be very curious to see how Wargaming manages this going forward in terms of the uh, the various game modes these ships will be available and how we earn them, what can we play them in, and so on and so forth. A um, couple last thing I kind of want to touch on here. Back um, several weeks ago when there was the whole big you know CC drama, people leaving, people coming and going in the program, um, there were a couple of promises, uh, commitments, let's say, Wargaming made. Um, that were supposed to be coming soon. One was they were going to start working to disclose the drop rates of the various loot crates and stuff coming to the game. I was actually su pleasantly surprised to say they're they're ahead of they're ahead of what I would assume their schedule would be on this. Shockingly, they've said they're going to disclose this for the Christmas crates this year, and probably sometime early next year we'll have all the rates for everything else. There's some there's a little Q and A uh, up on this process over on the dev blog. I'll put a link down below. Definitely go check that out, guys. This involves everybody. Um, you know, I want to continue to playing play the game, but I want to continue to support the game in a way that is not exploitative in the sense of I you know there's some very highly sketchy stuff going on around the crate system and I want to make sure that uh, that that gets addressed however we get there the last thing is they had promised that by the end of September there would be some uh, forthcoming changes announced to the CC program. And actually, I and I mentioned this last last scuttle, but I'd kind of misread that. Actually, what they were saying was they would have everything you know circulating internally. And and this morning over on the CC Discord, those changes were shared with us. Now they are all NDA at the moment. We are not allowed to share that with you guys just yet. But they have so far met that commitment to us of 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 you know designing some changes putting them on the table and the conversation just now starting up between the, 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 the contributors in the program and, uh, and, and uh, wargaming about what that's all going to take shape and so on and so forth. And hopefully at some point we'll be able to, to, to bring those to you guys. But so far guys, I got to say, I am pleasantly surprised to see them meeting some of these commitments. I did not expect them to. I had, I had, we all had plenty of reason for pessimism. Did we not? So I had, I've, so far, they've met this commitment more or less, and I am I am surprised and pleasantly so. 
Let's talk about Brandenburg real quick here at the end of the game. A um, couple of torpedo hits. You saw how hard those hit. The ship does not have hydro, does not have much torpedo protection. So, yikes. Very bad. Um, I got a ton of work out of the secondaries this game. When the screen comes up in a minute, you're going to see I had over 45,000 damage out of my secondaries. Some of that is the targets that I was um, voluntarily choosing to pick on. I picked on the Des Moines early. I got some good hits and a couple of fires in on the Kansas. I was able to beat up on another Brandenburg. I was able to put some uh, some secondaries work down range on a Minotaur. All of those are, are targets that are vulnerable to the things that these secondaries will penetrate. And that's a key point, I think, if you're going to play a secondary build German battleship, you got to know what you can and can't pen, what you should be wasting your time with the secondaries on or not. But also, I had at least one point, and you saw it there towards the end of the game, lurking in the cap circle. I held my main battery fire because I was low on HP, waiting for a heal to come back, and just letting my secondaries chew things up. And man, that was really impressed. Um... Didn't get the chance to use the torpedoes, of course. This is game number one in Brandenburg. So we'll see how she goes going forward. I'll play her some more on stream this week. But so far, guys, not a bad little ship. Hard to recommend when there are so many other good tier 8 battleships. There And there are a ton of them, right? So if this is a ship that's you know for sale or whatever, eh, I don't know that I can recommend spending money on it. But it is something that offers a little... She is a little different, a little unique in that regard. And she is kind of fun. Um... I would still, if you're looking to spend like money on a premium German battleship with torpedoes, guys, you want to take a look at Palmern. You probably want to leave Brandenburg where she is. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands. Be safe. Please tune into King of the Sea. We'll see you guys on the weekend. Take care.